Hello to you guys, my wonderful YouTube subscribers, and I wanted to start doing some videos just for you. So you guys can comment below. I'd love to hear you below. Also, you can suggest topics, suggestions, anything you want for me to do future videos on, post it in the comments below. Also say hello below. I'd love to know. And of course, if you have any questions or comments about the video that I'm doing now, uh, make sure to post those below. I am going to do a video on hot flashes. So one of the things that a woman from YouTube had asked about me doing was one on hot flashes. So I'm going to be doing that. But first I want to mention that if you are on Facebook, I have a really incredible Facebook community, Women Creating Healthy Lives. And it's a free community on Facebook. It's for women over 40 who are dealing with this midlife change plus beyond, right? So once you're going through it and then beyond. And I share, I do a lot of special Facebook lives there, live trainings. Sometimes I do a weekend where I do two to over one hour each videos, trainings about something specific. My last ones were on exercise and um, losing weight, I guess. What's, what, what stops you from losing weight and then also the, how to exercise in midlife. So I did that in the Facebook community, Women Creating Lives. So come and join there. I will post the link below for that. Okay, hot flashes. Now, there are many symptoms for perimenopause and menopause. Now, first of all, perimenopause is the phase of life when you're still getting your period. You're going through the ups and downs. There's a lot of hormonal balances during perimenopause. So if you're in that stage, you are still getting your period no matter how irregular uh, or how crazy it is, okay? When you have not had it for one full year, you are then in menopause. So menopause is, is when you have completely stopped your period, okay? So that's just something to note too. Even though I use the word uh, menopause in all my videos, that is because people, that's what they know it as. But the proper term for certain phase, one is perimenopause, the other is menopause, then postmenopausal. All right, so about the hot flashes, they usually come a bit later. They often are some of the last um, symptoms you may get, right? So I didn't get them till way late in perimenopause. I was pretty much a menopause by the, by the time I started getting them, and that's because your estrogen levels start to greatly decrease. Often when you're in perimenopause, at the be beginning of your hormonal changes, what happens is your, per your progesterone starts to decrease greatly and that throws your whole system off and you start getting some crazy symptoms. But then your estrogen is still quite high, okay? And that's when the weight gain too, because when our estrogen levels are kind of high, we get a lot of the weight gain, right? And then when our progesterone levels, when our estrogen levels start to come down, 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 we begin to lose way more muscle really fast. We, our skin loses elasticity, so we'll start to get way more wrinkles and the hot flash can come on pretty extreme. Um, the night sweats, which are when you get like almost like hot flashes at night, that is usually at the, more at the beginning when your progesterone levels are lowering, okay? So that's just kind of the thing. Hot flashes are usually during the day and at night too, but often during the day. And they can be triggered by specific foods, drinks, and things that are going on. Now, just a note, Hot flashes may never end in the way that they will decrease as in decrease as in intensity and decrease as in how often you get them. But I have known women in their 80s who still get them. So it is something that you may, because our estrogen is continually decreasing. If you are not taking hormones, and I suggest bioidentical hormones, not synthetic hormones prescribed by your doctor. So that's just that. So what can bring, um, hot flashes on stress stress is a big huge one any kind of stress upset like it can happen real fast soon as i get under get under stress like oh like that i'll get i'll get hot like a hot flash um certain times of the month so even though i've completely finished my period for many 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 years now i will still notice at certain times of the month i have like almost like pms again Right, and again, this is because our hormones are still fluctuating. All this, they just don't stop all of a sudden, right? And so then that's the way it is. They're much milder. So then all of a sudden I'll notice more digestive problems again, my mood swings a bit, get frustrated, uh, more tired maybe, loss of energy, and more hot flashes. Okay, so that can be happening too, and headaches, right? 
so we can still maintain some sort of hormone um, you know off during the month that can cause more of those things so still hormonal will cause hot flashes uh, but stress will bring them on right in that moment drinking wine drinking coffee alcohol period will um, if you are have something hot like uh, hot ginger tea spices cayenne um, ginger any hot spices red pepper flakes anything if you're having sp hot spicy foods those can bring on hot flashes fatty foods really heavy fatty foods when we eat foods that are really hard on our digestive system and heavy and harder to digest like like fatty foods heavy fatty foods meat with a lot of fat or just meat in general a starch a lot of starch like cooked potatoes especially when we combine potatoes and meat which you should never do starch and a meat never combine but when we do what happens is it just it takes up so much extra energy and so our body's kind of working harder it'll bring on a hot flash you will feel hotter you'll be like whoa I feel so hot chocolate can it's a sweet sugar so lots of sugary things can bring on hot flashes so basically if you do not have eating a clean diet and I mean mine is clean most of the time but I do sometimes have french fries I do sometimes have potato chips I do sometimes have uh, gluten-free chocolate mud cake which I love here I will have certain things like that and then I'll notice hot flashes it's just I go oh well yes Diana you ate that or you drank that here you go right I work through it and then when I eat really clean and and take really good care of myself and get enough sleep then I usually don't get as many hot flashes but remember I have finished I am postmenopausal. I finished menopause at 48 years old so I'm 55 so it's been a long time so as you age and you take care of yourself and you eat really clean your hormones will balance better therefore your symptoms will be greatly decreased so if you haven't take care of your taking care of yourself if you still have a lot of weight on you because weight being heavy obviously makes you hotter you know that and that makes your hot flashes worse you will get more hot flashes because your body has to work harder because of the extra weight you have I'm very slim but that doesn't mean I don't get them because they say sometimes which I've heard many times but it kind of contradicts so I'm not sure that they say the more fat you have on the less hot flashes well that hasn't always been true with my clients so <laughs> we're not sure about that one medications big one medications because they interfere with the chemical balance of your body they interfere with a lot of your body they cause inflammation within your body so it is sugary so it is a heavy starchy food so does a junk food so do all preservatives right all of those are leading and contributing to inflammation within your body and inflammation in your body leads to illness and disease not good um, your body's working really hard you are taking medication you're taking in tons and tons of toxins poisons into your body your body can't metabolize them properly it has to store them stores them in fat stores them in water retention stores them in fluids in your body tissues and fluids and fat in your body okay as well as again your body kind of seems to trying to be worked to get rid of these toxins but it's just such an overload and it's just making the body work harder you'll get more hot flashes for sure it also screws with the chemical balance of your body which are your hormones when we say we have a chemical imbalance that is a hormonal imbalance within your body okay now what can you do well I have a document here that's got some things on it that I'm going to read to you but um, everybody's different and so certain people get more relief from certain things than other people so you really got to find what is going to work for you so of course decreasing your stress any way you can do anything like deep breathing yoga you know practices and it can be every day about four or five times a day you just take five deep breaths and relax your shoulders close your eyes that's as easy as it can be um, moving your body exercising so one thing that I've noticed is when I've done cardio quite a lot my hot flashes greatly decreased like greatly decreased when I was doing cardio as soon as I stopped doing cardio for a while like I got too busy my hot flashes came back pretty bad so exercising doing cardio moving your body a lot will help to decrease the hot flashes too okay um, nutrients what your hormones need to function better therefore to stay more in balance would be minerals 
So if you're not consuming healthy foods, you're not getting nutrients, you're not getting the right minerals, you're not getting enough minerals, vitamins, antioxidants, all of those things, you need a ton of them in midlife and beyond. So you need really good high quality supplements and you need to eat really clean. There are also supplements that are, are and herbs and stuff that are strictly, uh, that really help support your body through menopause and perimenopause just like there are pregnancy vitamins, okay? You can buy special herbs. So a really good thing is to go to, a, if you see a homeo, home, homeopathic, like do homeopathy, that's another thing. You could do acupuncture, you could do um, herbs, so a herbologist. Um, you can go to Chinese medicine. They have things for hot flashes too. They will give you formulations, which is great, because it's like, okay, com they combine these herbs and things for you, tell you how to take it, and you start taking those, and you will get relief. So I highly suggest going natural, going for the herbs, the homeopathy, homeopathy <laughs> things, um, Chinese medicine, whatever uh, formulations, whatever, right? Or you can go and get... Um, at a health food store, they now have lots and lots of formulations for certain phases of menopause and certain symptoms. You just have to go there, ask them, read the bottles, whatever, tell what symptoms they're supposed to help and try and get on those. Note, they take a while to work. They are supplements. They are food for your glands, which feed your hormones, okay, which produce your hormones. So it's not a drug, it's not gonna be instant but it is the best thing you can do for your body. You can go and get like all these separate things like evening primrose oil, uh, red clover, chasta berry, dawn quay, which is Chinese medicine, black cohosh, licorice root. So you see there's, but for me I'm thinking why would you go get like all the separate ones? Why not go and get a formulation where you can pick it up at a health food store or from a naturopathic doctor or a herbalist or something where it has a few of these things combined so you don't have to take a whole bunch of separate things, right? So that's my good advice there. But there are also teas because teas are made out of herbs, flowers, and all of these things that can help us with this. So you, could, you might be able to find certain teas in herb stores or in health food stores that are good for symptoms like that and those are great to add because you can be sipping on some tea and helping so that you don't get as many hot flashes right um, I know licorice root you can get lic licorice root tea right and red clover I believe and then evening primrose oil is something separate essential oils you can you talk to somebody who um, sells essential oils and start using some real essential, real good essential oils. And that can completely help um, decrease your symptoms also, okay? They're wonderful and start diffusing them too. Uh, I think that's what, yeah. And good essential oil is clary, sage. That's one for sure. Lavender, of course, helps with stress. So there you go. So anything kind of that helps you decrease your stress um, Superfoods like um, spirulina has a lot of minerals um, and antioxidants. Wheatgrass is a really good one for helping your body detoxify. Um, and it is a really good wheatgrass, even just wheatgrass powder is a high alkaline food that helps decrease inflammation within your body too. So really take a look at some of the herbs. Like I said, it's it's basically I say go to somebody who you can trust, whether it's some sort of a Chinese doctor or a herbalist or a naturopath, a doctor, or even chiropractors may know, or your good health food store, and ask around for some formulations for the symptoms you would like to decrease and get something for that. Stay on it for at least three months and really notice, and then stay away from spicy foods, watch the types of foods you are eating, and manage your stress, all right? Okay, I hope that helps. Again, like I said, you can post, say hello below, post any um, comments or questions you have and any suggestions for future videos. And go to my site, dianamarchand.com because I have um, free trainings there for you too, right? So just take a look on the site 
and whatever my newer program is and take a look go ahead take a look on my site and see if there's anything um, that you would like more information that could be there for you and my YouTube channel where you know I have about 800 videos up all right take care bye bye